Hi, I'm Tay Kang of Harbor Freight Tools for Schools, and I'm excited to talk to you today about unlocking learning through core collaborations. Let's get started. Meet Scott Burke, a construction teacher from Green Mountain High School. Scott was a 2021 Harbor Freight Tools for Schools Prize for Teaching Excellence Grand Prize winner, and is renowned for creating the popular geometry and construction curriculum that has impacted more than 70,000 students nationwide. We are thrilled to have Scott share his insights and experiences. Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. Where are we right now? <laughs> we're, we're in Lakewood, Colorado. Um, we are on the western side of the Denver metro area. Uh, Jefferson County Public Schools that we're in is arguably the largest school district in the state. There's 22 high schools here and roughly 81,000 students. Green Mountain High School is a school of about 1,100 total students. It's a 9 through 12 comprehensive high school. It's got a really rich tradition. Um, it was established here in the mid-1970s and um, it's been here ever since. Uh, we're also located um, at the highest elevation here in the Denver metro area, just a little bit over 6,000 feet in elevation. And we overlook the entire Denver metro area. It's a beautiful place to work. How do you describe your geometry and construction class? Geometry and construction is a class where we build a house with kids and we teach them all their math through the natural progression of doing that house. For this type of class, it's very hands-on, very active, where the math really comes alive, much more so like a lab science type of class. With that, sometimes we have students who don't believe that they're good at math at all, and then they get in here and they realize, oh my gosh, I am actually good at math. I just didn't learn it the old way of through a textbook where you open up a page and do all the odd problems on that page, right? Because it has no context. Same thing too on our construction site. I mean, that's the lifeblood of career and technical ed is doing things with our hands because we all know that we're all doers first. How do you encourage students to enroll in geometry and construction? Honestly, when you do a program like geometry and construction where they're able to come in, get their math credit, also get their career and technical ed credit, um, it sort of sells itself. Um, but in addition to that though, I really do believe that students want to give back to their communities in a very meaningful and impactful way. And if you can provide a platform for them to do that, you will be blown away by how they will rise to that occasion and shine. And so examples here, of course, is that we're building houses for local families in need. And we can tell kids that all day long till we're blue in the face. And it doesn't hit home for all of them until we actually have the family standing here in the classroom someday. And that usually happens in like November. And all of a sudden, it's a complete game changer. Kids sit there and say, wow, I'm not just building a house anymore. I'm building a house for Zoe and Zoe's family. And it's going to change their lives. From there, of course, we talk about things like the homeless housing crisis right now. We talk about the housing crisis as a whole across the entire country. And these are all things that kids experience outside of school, but they're things that we can absolutely bring into this class that make a real impact on kids. How does this program help students of different backgrounds, experience levels, and dispositions? How does this reach a more diverse group of students? So students get to self-select into all geometry and construction programs. They are not hand-selected. And the only thing that we recommend is that you are taking a mirror image cross-sectional view of your school. So for example, if your school is roughly 10% gifted and talented and pre-AP and honors type students, you want to have kind of a mirror image of that across your entire student body. Also, if you have a uh, group that say it's like 20% um, that is special ed and ELL and all the different ways that we classify students, you want to have a mirror image cross-section of that. Geometry and Construction was a program created for everyone, and just like I said before, there is a role for every single person, and that's what makes it really unique. So it doesn't matter whether they come from um, a lot of poverty, whether they come from a lot of wealth, there's something in here for every single student and the collaboration and how we actually orchestrate that is really the key for how we run this program. 
Can you tell us about the success you have had in increasing enrollment for young women in geometry and construction? One of the things when we talk about non-traditional student populations, especially in skilled trades, we are usually lacking our young women that sign up for these types of classes. Geometry and construction really doesn't have a problem with that, but honestly, it's not about tools and equipment and construction. It's actually about the philanthropic endeavor that we do. The philanthropic component of this is really what hooks young ladies to want to come into the program, and that is what keeps them engaged time and time again, is that they want to give back to their communities. What are the biggest lessons learned or takeaways you have had from starting geometry in construction? First of all, uh, with students, anyone can succeed. And there's a role in this type of program for every single kid, no matter whether they are the high-flying, super overachieving, academically driven student, or whether they're the student that's kind of flying under the radar that really seems directionless. There's something for everyone here. And uh, I think that that is one of the big takeaways. The other big takeaway is community support. Um, in both school districts that I've ever worked in, um, as well as the other ones that I've trained all across the country. Once the community rallies behind this, which is not very hard for them to do, man, it just takes off from there. And you'd be surprised at how many people just come out of the woodwork to want to support this. What was the most surprising part of starting Geometry and Construction? Sometimes uh, who you hear in rumors as the most difficult person to work with from the core subject areas actually can turn out to be the absolute best person to work with. And um, I'll tell you a little story. When I first got started doing this, I was cautioned about partnering with Tom Moore, who was the original math teacher for geometry and construction. People said to me, oh my god, you don't want to partner with him. He's going to be a nightmare for you to work with. He's so hard to deal with, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, I think that as I got to work with Tom, the big thing there was that I found he was really burned out on math as traditional math. And once we had this new pathway, I found nothing but the best collaborator, team member, everything that you could possibly ever want to be able to do any of this kind of stuff. Um, he was in, headfirst in all the way from day one with this. So that would be a tip is don't rule anybody out because people will absolutely surprise you and blow you away sometimes at what they know and what they can do. How do you use your CTE budget to encourage core subject matter teachers to work with you? Show them the money. And what I mean by that is math teachers all the time, they are used to working with a budget that is pretty much nothing. And if you can partner with them and all of a sudden they say, man, I would do almost anything for a classroom set of calculators because we've been using the same ones for 20 years. And you can say, I can do that out of my CTE budget. That is huge. You instantly have made multiple allies by being able to do that, and it helps you and it helps them. Are there other core subjects that make natural allies or partners for skilled trades teachers? Absolutely. Math, of course, is kind of a natural one for many skilled trades areas, but also we can incorporate science into this. We can also incorporate language arts into this. There's a number of different things. I think the harder one to incorporate sometimes can be social studies. Not impossible, but can sometimes be a little bit difficult. Why is collaborating with other subject matter teachers important for skilled trades programs? So collaborating with other skilled trades programs or just other areas in general is super important. For us as skilled trade teachers, we don't typically understand the pressures that core subjects are under to one, have kids enjoy the content, but then two, have them perform well on all forms of high stakes standardized testing. Likewise, though, on the other side of the coin is that core academic teachers, they don't understand the pressures that skilled trade teachers are under to create a program that appeals to the masses where kids want to actually be involved. Because for us generally, uh, classified as elective teachers, we're always on the chopping block. If we don't have enrollment, we don't have jobs. And so they don't understand the pressure of that. But marrying those two together just creates a seamless transition where we get some amazing things that come out of it. And the best part is, is that we're able to answer all those age old questions of when am I ever gonna need to know how to use this? What are the benefits for your colleagues and other subject matters for having this level of collaboration? 
you name it, there's so many. There's the funding benefit, obviously, um, with this, because partnering together, core academic teachers aren't used to having any funding to be able to do anything creative with. And when they come into career and technical ed, it's not that it's just a blank check. It has to be very purposeful. But we can absolutely fold some things in that are very unique. I think that's one. I think, two, having an ally in a different subject area who has a different perspective than you is also critical with that. That lends itself to that continuous professional development that, honestly, I think so many teachers are missing. You know, what people don't know about teaching is that teaching overall can be a very, very, very lonely job where you're surrounded by people all of the time, but it can be completely lonely because you're always with kids. And that doesn't allow for a lot of collaboration. But when you are able to partner with someone else from another content area, it's just a breath of fresh air where it's like, I can professionally talk to you more than just a, hey, we're going to have this staff meeting to talk about um, integrated learning, for example. It's like, no, we're going to actually do this and we're going to integrate this together, which is just so incredibly rewarding. Everyone that I've ever worked with says that this is the cat's pajamas. This is the way to go. This is how we should actually be doing education. How do you measure success in your program? I measure success one student at a time. That's how I measure success. Um, whether it be that they're going to go into a career with construction or whether they're not, um, regardless, they're all going to live in homes at some point or another. Um, also, I measure success in how I see them go sometimes from these hardened, self-centered teenagers, so to speak, to being all of a sudden just these like hearts opened, minds on, aware of the world in a completely different way. And some of that comes through with some of the content that we actually uncover in geometry and construction. Do you have any tips on selling this type of collaboration with your school administrators? The first thing, Tay, I would say is um, really good PR, positive PR for your school, your community, and your district. I think that is one avenue for sure. And it's doing projects that are bigger than students expect. So for example, here, we build a house with kids every year. Um, in some of our other programs, we do other things that are just beyond them, like running an actual business. And so I think those are the important parts to add to that. Um, money and funding, absolutely. There's more industry support. Um, also, in addition to that, there's grants that you can go after that are a totally different avenue that a lot of people, especially in the administrative ranks, don't necessarily know about. Um, also with that, better engagement for students. Um, we have students all the time who come to this class and then we'll tell different people, whether it be counselors or parents or whatnot, that the only reason that they're still coming to school is because of programs like this. I mean, that's powerful. And so my question always is, how can we create that type of experience for seven periods a day rather than just two periods a day. Any surprises, any pitfalls to be aware of? Keep your eye on the ball um, all the time and always be planning with the end in mind. So if you're gonna be building a house, it's like, okay, well, where does that house actually have to go? Or if you're gonna be planning a math unit, where do you want those kids to be at the end of that math unit? And how does that connect then th to the previous units as well as to the upcoming unit? Thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, if folks want to learn and see more about your program, where should they go? So you're going to go to our website. Our website is www.contextuallc.com. You can find out a ton of information about the geometry and construction program there. You can find out a bunch of information also about our sister programs there. There's a lot of positive press releases on there. There's sample curriculum on there as well. You can also um, follow me on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook. I think those are the main ones that I do. Twitter, I do have Twitter, but I gotta be honest, I'm not the best at it. <laughs> Any final words of wisdom? It's kind of interesting, because I, um, I mean, this is my 21st year here now uh, in education, and my um, words of wisdom to people would be to just invest in what you are really passionate about, and you'll be amazed at how interesting your life will become with that. Um, I have a, I, I get kind of emotional talking about it because it's, um, it's definitely my life's work for sure. Um, and I'm really blessed and fortunate that, um, that I get to do this. And I don't know, I don't know what, um, 
what I did to actually be able to do this this way. But um, it's, a, it's an amazing life. And I love working with teachers from all over the country. Um, it's, it's, a, it's just a really interesting time. And my favorite thing is that no matter what city I go to now, I can collaborate with different folks who are having the same types of success. And like I said, I, I don't know what I um, did to ever deserve this, but it's been an amazing ride and I hope that it continues way beyond um, my, my lifetime. That's kind of what I hope. On behalf of the team at Harbor Freight Tools for Schools, thank you so much for joining us today.